Hello guys, uh, welcome back to this mass tutorials and um, we are going to look at statistics and on other statistics we're going to look at the histogram and the ogive. Well, first of all, what's that histogram? It's a bar graph and it should be drawn on a graph paper and we are going to also look at the ogive. The ogive is another name for cumulative frequency curve. It comes from the word accumulate. So we want to look at it's a peculiar form of presenting data as well. So we want to look at it uh, in details. My name is still Mr. Samuel D. Quaidia. So let's continue. We have one 20, 27 20, um, 2007 so we we'll want to look at the uh, question says the number of absentees and the frequency is given in this table so I'm going to use this worst question to answer so many questions that will be asked on this topic these two uh, broad headings so the first is to construct the cumulative frequency uh, the cumulative frequency table so we want to look at the cumulative frequency table first it is C F in short so how do I get the cumulative frequency table from this this frequency table so now it is construct the cumulative frequency table so cumulative frequency comes from the word accumulate so it means I'm, com I'm coming to add these frequencies together such that I accumulate them together so this is the first frequency is one so it starts the whole addition so this one added to this five give me the six that's the cumulative frequency cumulative means adding consecutively as I'm moving and coming across the item so it's 6 plus 10 is 16 and I have 16 plus 9 is 25 25 so 25 plus that we give me 30 so this is a verification that the total frequency here must be 30 this number must always be the same as this number which means that you do not make error in adding because you accumulated all the frequencies it's like the word itself accumulates to accumulate means to add consecutively as you're moving so it is 1 this is the first frequency added to 5 give me 6 6 added to 10 give me 16 16 added to 9 is 25 25 to 5 is 30 so I've accumulated the frequency and this total must be equal to this it means I didn't add up I didn't make any mistake there so now the next is to find the class boundaries I want to find the boundaries yes this boundaries if constructing the cumulative frequency curve the cumulative frequency curve the other name for it is the ogive the ogive is actually called the cumulative frequency curve so I've got the cumulative frequency table so I need to draw the cumulative frequency curve so in drawing the cumulative frequency curve I need the, the boundaries the boundaries cons consist of you know between this number and this number there is one point there so that's one point there I'm going to divide it into two such that I'll have half that is 0 0.5 and that's 0 0.5 is removed from the lower class limit this is a, this is a class limit this is, these are the, the limits this is lower class limit upper class limit lower class limit upper class limit so I subtract 0 0.5 from the lower class limit because there's a one between 4 and 5 if I have a number that is 4.2 it will be difficult for me to position it so I have to find a way to fix that number right inside this distribution so the difference between 4 and 5 is 1 1 divided by 2 it gives me 0 0 0.5 so 1 divided by 2 is given me half half is 0 0.5 so the 0 0.5 subtracted from the lower class limit and added to the upper class limit so if I subtract 0 0.5 from here I'll have minus 0 0.5 if I add 0 0.5 here I'll have 4.5 that's how I got this this is the same so it's like the same idea I remove 0 0.5 from 5 I'm going to be left with 4.5 I remove 0 .5, I add 0 0.5 to 9 I'll have 9.5 I remove 0 0.5 from 10 I'll have 9.5 if I add 0 0.5 to 14 I'll have 14.5 I remove 0 0.5 from 15 I'll have 14.5 then I add 0 0.5 here I have 19.5 and so on so 19.5 and 24.5 so these numbers are what this range is what's called the boundaries you have the lower class boundary the upper class boundary lower class boundary upper class boundary so it is not the upper class boundary alone that constitute the boundaries you must write the lower class 
boundary and the upper class boundary that makes up the boundaries. Plural there. It is not only the upper class boundary that makes up the boundary. It is both of them. You have the lower class boundary, upper class boundary. The bigger number here is the upper class boundary, lower class boundary. This constitutes the boundaries. So we have got the boundaries. Now we come to also find the, let's say now draw. Use, draw the, cum the cumulative frequency curve. So we are trying to draw the cumulative curve by we now have the information for all of them. So you have your um, your graph paper. So you can draw this from your graph paper. You use that. So I'm now trying to draw the cumulative frequency curve. So the cumulative frequency curve gives me that. This is this is my. So I've drawn my x-axis precisely. So not too perfect, but you can you can realize it from here. This is. Um, Yes, yeah, so I've got a line. This is the x-axis. So in drawing the cumulative frequency curve, I need the cumulative frequency on the y-axis. This is the y-axis. Have that cumulative frequency curve. And on the x-axis, I have the upper class boundary. I have to write it in full. Upper class, upper class boundary. It is upper class boundary. You write in full. Don't abbreviate like I did here. So now we look at the cumulative frequency. The highest number there is 30 and the lowest number there is 1. So I must have a space, a scale that we accommodate all these numbers. The lowest number and the highest number. So I'll take 5 to, to be precise. Because of my space I use 5. Then I have 10 there. Then I have 15. Then I have 20. Then I have 25. Then I have 30 here. So now I started from zero. So now I come back here. Now on the boundaries, on the x-axis, it is the upper class boundaries. These boundaries here, that these are the upper numbers. So I can pull them here. I start here. This is 4.5. This is 9.5. This is 9.5. Now I have 14.5. This is 14.5. Then I have 19.5. I have 19.5 then 24.5 and these are the upper class boundary it's not because I'm using only the upper class boundary when I'm constructing the cumulative frequency curve that I have to put only the upper class boundary inside this column. No, you must have the upper class and the lower class all is constituting this column because the name is boundaries. Boundaries does not constitute only the upper class boundary, it constitutes the upper and the lower class boundary all there. So now I have got, I don't need to put any zig here because this distance, my scale is uniform. This is 4.5 to there, it's all uniform scale. So now I can now draw the a curve. It's a curve drawing so it is one correspond to 4.5 so this is one they say one this is two this is three and four they have five so one correspond to one 4.5 that's it here and 9.5 to six this is five six is somewhere here so this is 9.5 there so I remove that then I have the 14.5 is 16 this is 16 so we are here this 15 16 will be there and this 16 that's it here so I remove this so it's just for me to locate that point. So I have 25, 19.5. This is 25, 25, 19.5. This should be drawn on a graph paper. So I remove this here. This is, mm -hmm. so I have the last one is, this is the cumulative frequency study and 24.5. So 24.5, 24.5 and 30 here. That is it here so I remove that this is it so now we have got the point so you draw the graph you using it's a curve no no ruler here it's not straight line it's just a curve and this curve is always s shape it's an s shape curve here it's always this way because the, 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 the figures are added, accumulating, you are adding, as you are accumulating the figures, the cumulative frequency was going off, increasing. So you do expect this curve to come down. It's always going to be a curve that is going to project upward like that. So that's how it appears. So now we want to use this curve. The question, this is called the Ogive. You can call it cumulative frequency. It's called the Ogive. Or the cumulative frequency curve. It is the cumulative frequency curve or the ogive, as you can call it the other way. So now you have the cumulative frequency curve and the ogive. So watch this. We want to find now from this ogive, you say estimate your median. So I want to find, because before going to the median, I want to find all the questions that you'll be asked here. First, you must, you'll be asked to find, to find the first quartile. First quartile is Q. 
Q1, Q4 quartile. First quartile, it's first, the other name for course, first quarter is lower quartile. Lower, what is lower quartile? Quartile came from the word quarter, which means divide the distribution into four equal half and take one part of it. That's the first quartile. So the, the, this no total distribution is summation F, which is the same as total number of the frequency is called N or the summation F. So now if I'm finding the, it's like dividing this number into four equal half and take one half. So now we have first quartile is what? This is position. This is just the position. It's called the first quartile, which is also called lower quartile. It is only the position of the lower quartile we are finding here. It is not the lower quartile. That's why I wrote TH to tell you that it's just the position. So I have 30 divided by four. So I have that. So this is going to be 7.5 position. So that's the, the quartile position, first quartile position. So I look for, this is five, this is six, this is seven, this is eight. Now this is 7.5, 7.5 .5 I get there, 7.5 I touch, I go down and read. So from my graph here, let's say this is 9.5. So this will be 10.5 somehow. So let's say this is quarter one is 10.5. So I'm reading it from here. Uh, you draw the line to go and touch this graph from that point, call the curve and you put your ruler to read, draw here and it is dropping on this number. Let's say this number is, this is 9.5, this is 9.5. So just a little after the 9.5, I say 10.5 from my own graph paper. That is what I've got. So you can use your own graph paper to get a proper figure. So I go to second quartile. What is the second quartile? It's Q2. Second quartile, the other name for second quartile is actually median. Median is the other name for second quartile. So second quartile is 2N all over 4 distribution there. So that's the position. See the position? So this is the same as N over 2. If you do the math here, second quartile is giving us N over 2. So this is 30 divided by 2 position. So this is the 15th position. 15th position is second quartile. 15th position. So I look for the 15th position. This is the 15th position. You take your ruler, you go through this 15th position there, and it drop down, drop down, drop down, drop down. Let's say some here, here just before 14.5. Let's say second quartile is given by 14. This is, let's say 14. It's possible that it can be 14. Maybe this 14.5, maybe that is 14 or 13. Point five. So here, so I got 14 in the middle. So I got 15 in that case. So if you do it properly, you have your figures somewhere there, 15. So maybe it's somewhere if you, if you go there and you get the position. But you use your graph paper and get it. I'm just giving you an estimate here in this case. So because I'm not using graph paper, so I'm giving you an estimate in that case. Let's just say it's before here is 14. That's 14.5. This is 14. So there. So now I'm coming for the third quarter. Third quarter is Q3. So Q3 is the third quarter. So you must you must draw this line to touch there and you go down to read this number. That's the number that is the median. This is the median or the second quartile. The other name for it is median. Yep. So now we come to the third quartile. It's three n all over four position. So now we have three times thirty all over four position. So what is this story? It is the total frequency, which is N. So you now have 90 by four. That's what happens here. So this is a two. You go there, this is 90 by four. That is 22.5. So you have 22.5 position. So 22.5 position, so we have the two. So I bring, I bring it down here. This is uh, 22, this 21, 22.5, some, some here, here. I go and touch, and I go down, I read, read. Let's say it's dropping here. So I read, this is Q3, this is third quartile, it's called upper quartile. Let's read here, this is four point, five point between here, this is one, two, three, four, five. So now this is 14.5, 15.5, 16.5, let's say 17.5. I read that as 17.5. It is not as accurate as the graph paper. I'm not using graph paper, I'm just estimating values here, so watch out for that. This is first quartile, it's called lower quartile. Second quartile is called median. Third quartile is called upper quartile. So I found the whole quartiles. The, so I'm, I want to also find the 60th percentile. Let's say I wanted to find 60th percentile. 60th percentile is 60. 
60 and all over 100 percent means per hundred percent percentile 68 percentile p60 percent means per hundred quarter means per four so it is four four for quartile 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 four but when it's percent is hundred so it is now i put it here this is 60 times 30 all divided by 100 so it is the 18th position this is 18th position if you punch it from your calculator so i look for 18th position this is 20 so this is 19 this is 18 that is the 18th position there so i go with it right there right there right there i touch and i come down with it come down with it so let's say there it is on 14.5 this is 15.5 so let's say p60 that is 60 percentile is 15.5 yep so now i have read all the points there this is the i go with the line again use the line and go there and touch and get the upper quartile that's how i read this all of them are read from this axis this is the upper quartile this is the percentile so from the percentile i may want to find the seventh decile let's say decile in this case seven decile is seven times this is 7n if you like i write it first 7n divided by 10 this is deci position the same position the c from the word decade deci decade that's 10 so you divide the distribution into 10 so it is 7 times 30 that's the n is 30 that is divided by that this is 21 so 7 times 30 21 so you want to find that this is 7 times 30 all over 10 so you get that so this gives you 21 position the 21st position so i get that it's still the position so i get there i look for it this is the 20th this was the 20th in that case so i go 21 i go down go down and touch i come down and read the decile so the same procedure it's only the names that differ quartile i divide by four percentile i divide by 100 and decile i divide by 10 from the word decade the c meter decade 10 percent percent means hundred and quarter by four so now i have located that so you'll be asked also to find the, the the range now we can find the range here what is a range first we look at interquartile range so let me find the interquartile range what is the interquartile range the inter international means between nations inter Interhouse means between houses. International means between nations. Yeah. So if I'm talking about interquartile, it's going to be between quartiles. And what are the quartiles here? Since I'm talking about range, so I'm talking about range is the difference between an upper number and a lower number. So if I'm talking about interquartile range, I'm talking about the lower quartile and the upper quartile, the difference between them. So the upper quartile was Q3, that is the upper quartile. So the upper quartile quartile minus the lower quartile is what gives you the inter inter quartile so the upper quartile is 17.5 and the lower quartile is 10.5 so 10.5 so i've got seven as my inter quartile the inter quartile is 10 is seven we are just subtracted the two so i can also be asked to find the semi inter quartile range this is semi inter quartile semi interquartile range this is the range also it is also giving us q3 minus q1 semi means half semi so it means that i just need to divide this by two i divide the interquartile by two give me the semi interquartile so i have 3.5 that is halfway the interquartile is called semi interquartile or semi interquartile so i have got done that i've run the semi interquartile range so this is the question you are supposed to answer you have got the percentile first you started off with the quartile quartile we found the percentile percentile divided by 100 decile divided by 10 so it could be any number it could be 60th percentile it could be seven decile six decile any number can come here and that is the interquartile is between 
the thing the upper and the lower quarter is subtract them you just read from the graph you don't need to go to the graph anymore just take the answers there and subtract get that same my is to divide it by two so this interquartile divided by two is what's called a semi interquartile you'll be also asked to also draw the percentile axis so percentile axis if i want to construct the percentile axis i need the i need the the, the gap the vertical distance between this point the highest point and also the lowest point so that is uh, i'll just sketch that a little bit if i wanted to find the the if you want to find you want to draw the percentile axis you look at the first point somewhere here this is the first the last the last the lowest point somewhere point is somewhere here so i'll be able to get it here that is somewhere here and the highest point is somewhere there this is the highest point here so between this highest point and the lowest point here i've got to find the gap between them so the gap between them is somewhere there so i draw so you will be asked to find the percentile axis draw the percentile axis so drawing the percentile axis is this so i can now draw the percentile axis and measure with your own graph paper you now measure that distance between them there and now let's say it is 80 centimeter here so 80 centimeter i'm now coming to divide it into 10 equal portions so if it is 80 centimeter that is i'm trying to draw the percentile axis what is the percentile axis that is what is well, this this line draining these two point to there so now i want to i want to divide them into 10 equal half because it is percent percent means per hundred so i've got let's say i measure this i got 80 centimeter so 80 centimeter i'm coming to divide this 80 centimeter into 10 equal half because i'm drawing the percentile axis so now 80 divided by 10 equal half it is going to be 8 8 centimeter so from here to here 8 centimeter i get a one another 8 centimeter there another so you let's say that is 8 centimeter somewhere there another eight centimeter there another eight centimeter there another eight centimeter there another eight centimeter there 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 until i get this 80 centimeter divided into 10 equal half this is one two three four let's say five okay six seven eight nine and ten so it is this is a percentile axis this is eight centimeter this is another eight centimeter that's 16 this is another eight centimeter you go 24 you go there until all of them are all eight eight centimeter i just assume that this distance is 80 centimeter so this 80 centimeter i want to distribute it into 10 equal half in trying to draw the percentile axis so i measure the distance between the upper number and the lower number so i divide it into a half it can be any number i'm just estimating 80 here if it's 100 centimeter from your ruler then you divide it into 10 equal half so each piece here will be 10 10 10 but because this is 80 i'm dividing into 10 equal half it's supposed to be 8 8 8 8 so if i want to now find the you can use a percentile axis to also find the 60th percentile so let's say this is 10 this is 8 this is 16 this is 32 this is 24 this is 32 and so on so i, I can also go with the third percentile if i like this is i measure here this is 10 10 10 so i get when i get the third i just go straight and measure i read again but normally it is the percentile axis that you are just asked to draw it's not it's not too popular but you will be asked sometimes to also draw the percentile axis how do i get the percentile axis is to look at this this last part of the hogive i bring it right there and I give, bring the top part and I try to get this gap between them. This gap between is what I'm trying to estimate. So I estimate this gap, I read it from my own ruler. So after reading it from your graph paper, you now divide that number into 10 equal half because you want to draw percent. Percent means per 100. So I divide it to 10, 10 so that I can have the 10 centimeter, the 100 centimeter, the percentage of this gap into that 10, 10, 10, 10. That is, if it is 60 centimeter, each, each, one here is going to be each, cent, each six centimeter is supposed to be 10 percent 10 percent that's mean by percent so i divide the gap into 10 equal half any number can become can be the number that is 80 divided by 10 is going to be 8888 if it is 90 divided by 10 each one will be 99 centimeter so that is how you draw the percentile axis now it's not a popular one but just note that there is also something called the percentile axis which can be drawn from the ogive there and that is the procedure to get the percentile axis so i can 
can just uh, remove it from you so that you can now see what the ogive proper. This is the ogive proper. So this is the, the ogive. Remember how the ogive came? It's called the cumulative frequency curve. I've used it to verify all the semi interquartile and I've done the semi interquartile is divided by the two and the interquartile is divided by that. So we have done the upper quartile, we have done the median, the median is the, uh, the same as the second quartile, the lower quartile is the same as the, uh, the, the uh, first quartile, the, the lower quartile which is the first quartile, the median is called the second quartile and the third quartile is called the upper quartile and you know how all of them come. So it is from here I get to that point I run all of them I read from this axis. So you see how it came from this point. So watch out for this kind of question. This is the end of that uh, ogive question. Uh, and uh, you watch out for the histogram. I just did the ogive there just because the ogive is a little bit complex so I have to explain that properly for you. So this curve is what is called the cumulative frequency curve or the ogive. So thank you for your audience and watch out for the histogram on this question.